The music is always a mirror of what is happening in the moment. This time the song is Twilight Time, played precisely as Jack returns home from work at twilight. Twi means two, so twilight means two lights. Twilight time is the time the sun is below the horizon at morning and evening. The morning star, the evening star, Venus. This represents the merging of the sun with the equator or horizon, the Ouroboros shown in the opening of the film. Twilight is the moment that daylight merges with night, also comparable to an eclipse, the coming together of the sun and moon or the male and female, as the song says, lighting the spark of love that fills me with dreams untold, together at last at twilight time. This is the moment that the pineal connects with the pituitary and the kundalini energy in the head. While the ladies are poolside, the song is Life Would Be a Dream. If I could take you to a paradise up above and hoping we'll meet again. This is the fourth reference to either dividing or reuniting the male and female. First we had night and day, then you broke my heart in two, together at last at twilight time, and now hoping we'll meet again. This song directly refers to life as a dream and paradise being up above. The up above refers to consciousness bringing the unconscious to the conscious. In this moment, Alice has flashbacks to the dancing girls while she hums Jack's song. After Violet's welcome party, the ladies get together at the fashion show, and the song playing over the speaker system is Who's Sorry Now by Connie Francis. This song plays while the ladies talk about Margaret and her tragic tale that serves as a warning for the others. It emphasizes the tragedy of Margaret's woes while hinting at Alice that this is what is to come for her if she is to go against the Victory Project. The lyrics are quite nasty. I tried to warn you, now you must pay. What kind of friend revels in your suffering? For a paradise, it's kind of dark, and yet no one notices. So there seems to be a duality in the music just as there is in Frank's speeches. It's like an abusive partner. Be loyal to me, but I'm going to push you away. Don't go out in the desert because you'll get your children taken from you. But also, no one challenges me more than you do, Alice. So what do you want, Frank? Alice repeats her morning routine, cleaning the house, listening to Frank talk about sacrifice and fear on the radio. Frank says, Focus on the sacrifices you make by staying still, by not going after what you know you are owed, by giving up and taking the smaller version of your life. It would make more sense that Frank would be talking to the men, but the men have gone to work, so the women are the ones who hear this. As far as we ever see, only Alice hears Frank talk on the radio. Alice is drawing Frank's voice from the real world into the simulation in the form of a radio show. He speaks to her subconscious, encouraging her to go after what she wants. Sacrifice takes faith. I'll stand in this pain, hurt, knowing that what I want is waiting on the other side. It's scary to sacrifice, but you're sacrificing more by sitting in that fear. Waiting on the other side. We've had three songs on the radio that refer to someone waiting on the other side, and now this. And Frank emphasizes the fear challenging Alice to face her fear, the fear set on them by the rules of the Victory Project. But why would Frank, who is the leader of the Victory Project, the creator of it in the real world, the god of this world, who seemingly hates women, be challenging Alice to take him on? Why would he care about Alice and what she does? If he truly saw Alice as a threat, he could easily take her out of the simulation like he did with Margaret, who apparently wasn't a threat. Frank even had Jack, her husband, hand her over to get electroshock therapy in order for Alice to be more compliant. This is Frank planting the seeds of her rebellion, daring her to go against the fear, to step outside the boundaries of the project. And so Alice stops cleaning immediately and is prompted to get dressed and go out, although she doesn't seem to consciously know why. While Alice is on the trolley, the song To Know Him Is To Love Him plays. Once again, it's a song about a woman being with her man. Alice is on the trolley following her intuition, following the path Frank set out for her. And now the music is once again reflecting that she's doing the right thing. Why can't he see he was meant for me? To know him is to love him. Perhaps this is talking about the father. 
Knowing the truth leads you to the Father, which is what gets her out of the simulation reunited with him. While the song is playing, Alice is humming Jack's song, and then the plane flies overhead. This was why she was led to take the trolley. I'll cover the walk into the desert in another video. When Alice wakes up, she's at home in bed, and Jack is making her dinner, which is an unusual event. So much so, that he has no idea how to make mashed potatoes. On the radio, he plays Little Girl Don't You Understand by Bobby Freeman. Bobby is short for Robert, which means to shine, and Freeman is the same as Frank. The lyrics say, Little Girl, Don't You Understand That I Want to Be Your Man, once again underscoring the theme of uniting the male and female. Calling her a little girl is kind of belittling. Baby, baby, I love you so, I ain't never gonna let you go, which is quite threatening. Once again, we have a song that has undertones of hostility and violence, threatening to hold on to her despite her desire to leave. This is Jack wanting her to stay in the simulation, especially as it continues to say, baby, baby, why don't you behave? It's scolding her for going out into the desert, for showing disloyalty. The moment Alice stops talking about the plane, the song changes on the radio to Need Your Love So Bad, and Alice changes her tune also to saying that it was all a dream. I need someone to stand up and tell me when I'm lying. Jack is lying to her, but she doesn't stand up to him. She's likely confused because she just came out of the simulation and all the strange things that have happened to her so far would be very confusing. Jack must know she popped out of the simulation in the real world because Bunny told Alice at the end of the film that Jack put her back in. Stop driving me mad. I need your love so bad. Like the previous song, it's rather controlling language, wanting her to behave and to love him. And the line, write it on paper so it can be read to me, this feels like a nod to the song Jack sings to her from the other side, Anki's love letter, the messages seeping through from the other side because they are being read to her. And we know the song is coming from Jack because the song says, tell me you love me. And then a moment later, Jack asks Alice, do you love me? And Alice has a flashback to her telling him in the real world, the most, which she repeats here. Alice returns to her normal routine, cleaning windows while listening to Frank, and Frank said, Yes, there are always people who will benefit from the status quo, and they will come for us. They're already coming for us. I will give everything I have to create this better world for all of us, but I can't protect you without your loyalty. When you promise something, do you keep that promise? Is your word your bond, your truth? Is it our covenant? Until tomorrow. Suddenly, Alice is squeezed between the wall and the window. Alice gave up on her word, her truth. Frank is directly addressing Alice's lack of integrity. He can't protect her if she doesn't stick to what she knows to be true. This is why the walls start closing in on Alice. She's feeling the pressure of being in the simulation tighten on her because she didn't stick to the truth. The simulation is going to get hostile so that she sticks to it this time. Otherwise, she won't get out. Frank's sermon is followed by the song The End of the World by Skeeter Davis. This song emphasizes Frank's feeling of betrayal. The simulation is closing in on Alice through this song as well. Alice tried to exit the simulation and now it's threatening her. Before, she was getting love songs about uniting male and female, but now this song is tragic. It's the end of the world. You betrayed me. You're not loyal. Why everything is the same as it was. Alice's life is very repetitive. Every day is the same as it was. I can't understand how life goes on the way that it does. Every day feels the same in this mundane reality. Nothing really changes, yet we have the illusion of change, of tomorrow. It ended when you said goodbye. But what is it that ends the physical world, or in this case, the simulation? The end of our romance with it, the end of our attachment to it. When we no longer want anything from it, we no longer seek fulfillment in it, we no longer tie ourselves to it, our love for it is lost. The world will end when Alice says goodbye. This is the end of part 5. There's much more to come, so please stay tuned for part 6, coming soon. 
If you like this video, please show your support for my channel. Like, share, subscribe, comment, contribute. Contributions over $15 will receive a link to the Johnny Depp Dark Shadows material, so please be sure to include your email address. Kindly visit my website, subscribe to my backup channels, join the Discord group. All links are in the description box below. Thanks for listening. Hope you're having a great day. Bye for now.